Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, uh, but I'm going to be reviewing all the Sentinels and uh, discussing their uses, uh, more particularly with the Barrow mods, and how even though most Sentinels uh, have been relegated to essentially the back seat compared to the Panzer, Volpophila, or the uh, Smedikovat. Uh, each of these guys actually have pretty unique niche uses, and I, I just wanted to do like a one-shot video discussing all of them. Uh, obviously the Helios Prime is the most useful out of all of them, um, but even then, because of recent changes to how the Gladiator system works, uh, not so much anymore. Uh, so we have the Dijin or however you pronounce it, equipped. Uh, going over its preset mods, which is their specific quirks. Um, it has... Okay. Uh, it has Thumper and Fatal Attraction. This is what you get when you build it. Uh, essentially, it just gives it uh, more range. It makes it shoot at 60 instead of 30 for assault mode, so you won't be able to equip all of them or both of them. Um, the big deal out of it is, is it's a plus and a minus. If you have, uh, say if you're further in the game and you have the Nautilus, all of a sudden your Nautilus has a 60 meter range uh, with the Veriglass. It, the Nautilus weapon, the Veriglass, has a 60 meter range to it because it doesn't have fall off because it's a rifle. Um, if you have like a sweeper equipped, where it's it's a shotgun, it's going to try to shoot, and <clears throat> with the exception of maybe some benefits for priming, it's not going to do any damage. So this is dependent on the weapon that you choose to equip. Um, but the main reason why we're here is to discuss the precepts and like niche uses for each thing. Uh, this Dijin was... Its main usefulness was Reawaken. At the time before they came out with uh, the Deimos pets, this was the only Sentinel that lived for forever. So its main usefulness was Reawaken, and this is a Barrow mod. Or not Barrow, uh, this is a uh, Cephalon Samaras mod. Um, but it does have this extra precept and it's a small thing that it does but it's actually kind of useful in some way so I just wanted to go over things like this show how to use it um, the fatal attraction has sort of a gimmick to it where it will CC an enemy and make them harmlessly walk toward you but it doesn't work on one. And it won't work on an enemy. We'll get a group. It doesn't work on an enemy that's already been... Like, see, they turn purple. Then it blows up. Gives you corrosive stacks. There you go. It works on groups of enemies. And then... It will stop. So, as you're running through a mission, you can run through a mission, especially if you're on an invisibility frame. You can use this to just passively pacify the enemies, and it will just constantly trigger, because the Sentinel will be invisible as well, right? So this can help if you're having issues with, say, like Eximus or something like that. Though it won't work on anything with an overshield. Sort of. Um, let's go with three of these guys. Let's actually show what it does. Okay, this is going to be very noisy. So you see it triggers. It doesn't give you the CC. But the explosion still CCs them. Even with overshield up. So it's it's... It still has a bit of CC against them. Let me get 
stronger enemies that survive that. Um, all right, we'll do 50. This does sometimes bug in the simulacrum. Let me choose different Eximus. Um, okay. Four, get rid of those guys. Level 50. Okay. Alright, there we go. And the explosion, look, they all have overshield up and they get staggered. So it is. So the fatal attraction where they harmlessly walk toward you won't trigger on Eximus. But the explosion damage from the precept still applies. The corrosive that it spreads everywhere will still apply. Um, and this is, if you don't have corrosive on your build, this is kind of a nice way to get it under your build. There's also some synergy with the, uh, what is it, the Gazelle Machete, where it boosts damage. Um, I wouldn't really say, besides low levels, that it's worth specifically modding for it and running the Gazelle Machete. But it's interesting that the explosion still CCs Eximus. Um, so it actually got me thinking a bit about maybe running this on a stealth frame. Um, because even if your stealth the passives of the Eximus still come at you, right? And this won't stop the passives from triggering, like the energy drain and whatnot, but it's still CC, right? So maybe there's something abusable with this. I am not aware of it, but I thought it was interesting that it still CC'd Eximus, right? Because that's those abilities are few and far between, so that counts. Uh, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> the carrier. Um, this one's short, sweet, and to the point. Um, the okay, I didn't pull it out, but these are the two big ones. Uh, ammo case. If you run this, if you have a bullet hose weapon that really, really sucks down ammo, you can run this mod, and the mod does exactly what it says: increase ammo capacity by twenty-five percent and converts ammo pickups into ammo for equipped weapon after two seconds. Um, to min-max this a little more, not in a hyper-sweaty way, you could actually run a ammo scavenger aura. They do exist. Okay, so we have sniper scavenger, pistol scavenger, rifle scavenger, shotgun scavenger. And you would just run... Um, you wouldn't use, like, sniper or shotgun unless you're using those. But if you're running ammo mutation, you would pick rifle because it's the most common one. Because it would give you the biggest multiplier. And then ammo mutation would convert it into whatever you're using. If you're using, like, a pistol or a shotgun. So, uh, it, it's up to you whichever one you feel is the best. Um, there's no real wrong answer here, though I would say just because rifle and pistol drop so much more, um, to go with those intrinsically, uh, and shotgun and sniper are obviously super rare. I mean, not like obtusely rare. All right, so the next one is the death cube. Um, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> This would be a sentinel if you are running a frame that is incredibly energy hungry. Um, and then the use for this, more or less, would be, uh, say, like a Valkyr, right? It, you're running like a, a four build where she's invulnerable and you need to pick up energy orbs. Um, generally, uh, like Vazarin, for example, like a energy over time thing, 
won't apply when you have a channeled ability going. One of the ways you can deal with that is by picking up energy orbs more often. And one of the ways you can get around that, and this has kind of been superseded by the Panzer, running the sense set on the Panzer because it has the spores and it hits everything. But if you're running something that's very, very energy hungry, energy generator, death cube drops an energy orb after assisting in 10 kills. The way you would abuse this is you would use uh, something like a Verglass Sentinel weapon and it would, you would mod it for gas damage and electric, but specifically gas if you don't have the mod space for electric also. So you mod it for electric, or sorry, you mod it for gas, and if you mod it for gas on that weapon, you would end up with uh, gas cold, which isn't too bad, because um, the Verglass has an eight cold. Um, and you would mod it for that, and the AoE ticks from the gas damage count as assisting in kills, because it, it's at least one damage, right? It, it's a weird way to cheese it. And plus, with this, enemies injured by the companions have a 25% to drop a health orb when killed. One damage counts as injured. So you're proccing both of these super fast. So if you're running equilibrium on your frame, this is a way you can get a ton of energy onto your frame and you almost almost don't need equilibrium because you're getting energy from this you're getting health orbs from this but you want that combination of picking up health orbs and it gives you energy or if you pick up an energy orb you get health so this was the name of the game before the panzer i think in terms of like energy per second this does better um, especially if you're doing the gas build, because it's the double stack. But the Panzer lives forever. Um, now, there are ways to get around it. Like, there are Parazon mods now, where if you do, I think, three Mercy kills in, like, 30 seconds, you, regen and, uh, you bring back a Fallen Companion. So you can deal with the Sentinel difference to the Panzer, but it is a more complicated play style marginal you would just have to keep in mind with it and it, the difficulty isn't going to come from remembering the mercer kills it's coming from the fact that everybody's running around with brahmas and czars and one-shotting everything like if there's no enemy to mercy kill you literally can't use the mechanic to get your pet back right so the Panzer ends up edging it out just because it lives so much longer. But before, if you're running solo, this is definitely an option for a super spam-heavy build. Um, like, I've used this on Korra before. Uh, the other preset mod, um, Vaporize, <clears throat> is kind of trolly. What this mod needs to say for what it is, is it says the Sentinel will deal 600 damage to an enemy within 30 meters. What it should say is, on a timer, okay, uh, let me remove all. On a timer, you get one massive shot where your modded weapon, right? So I have all these mods on here. 347 what it needs to say is on a cooldown this 26 becomes 600 the difference is is that there's no weapon in the game with a base alpha hit for raw damage of 600 so for one shot right for one shot without multi-shot this will do the highest single instance of damage in the game. Um, I think even with, like, Kuva weapons, it takes into account, like, uh, not that this affects Kuva weapons, right? But, like, Kuva weapons have really high alpha damage. Uh, let me check. I've got a... Um, this is Bullet Hose. 
Okay, this is 31. It's bullet hose. Um, let's do the plasmor. I think the plasmor with the progeny. Yeah, okay. So for one shot, this weapon, the death cube vaporize beam will do 60% of a tenant arca plasmor shot. Um, so I misspoke earlier. I forgot about, I, when I said it, I forgot about the tenant weapons. The boost not, puts them over. Um, but this is a shotgun and that's a rifle, so slightly different modding. Um, you can abuse it a bit, because this doesn't have fall off. That's what keeps this number under control. A rifle doesn't have fall off. So that's a huge shot, like a huge bow shot, right? Um, and a lot of times for 30 meters, right? This will, if it's a trash mob, I've seen this one shot level 1000 trash mobs. Not that that's saying a lot, but the damage is definitely there. You can get this to do pretty nuts damage, especially if your multipliers are stacked up on the sentinel so there is some niche uses for this uh, at lower levels like star chart maybe base level steel path basically this means that on a cooldown you have to deal with one less enemy unless it's like a bombard or like uh like a nox or something where it has the damage reduction um so that's basically all this means is every uh, i think it's like 15 seconds or 10 seconds it's not a long cooldown um, you just have to deal with one less enemy, is how this, how I view this, how you should view it, right? But the energy generation is the big deal with the death cube. If you're very, very energy hungry, um, and you feel like the Panzer isn't keeping you topped up, or you don't have space for, uh, like, equilibrium. Like, okay, for the Korra build that I had... This setup was how I was getting around it. So this, I was talking, I changed it, but this should have been stretch. So for this build, even though I can't fit equilibrium on here, I was using energy generator on a death cube to keep my energy up because I can't fit equilibrium on here because it gives energy and it gives, uh, gives health. So this was allowing me the super energy hungry spam build. I was able to keep my energy up with this using the death cube with energy generator. Um, and because I was one shotting everything, um, this was nice and safe also. So this definitely still has some relevant uses though. It is slowly being relegated to more and more niche things. Uh, all right. I think that's good enough for that death cube. Think energy generation. And a really trolly one tap generally. Um, the next one is actually kind of my favorite. It's so silly. The, the squiggly boy. I like it. Um, okay, so. The only real thing you're going to use on this is electro balls, and it's so silly. There's arc coil. I don't like running both of them. Um, Reason being is that this is it, it triggers like almost constantly, but the chance of a status effect is pretty low. So basically, by big number averages, it zaps seven enemies at once within 10 meters, which is super close, dealing 100 electricity damage, which is nothing uh, for a 10% status chance. Um, so basically, every two shots, it will trigger. An electric AOE. The problem is, is that this fires so much where I really want Electro Pulse to trigger. And let me show you what this does. This is super cool. And it's kind of so dumb. Alright, hold on. Let me let me pause the AI. Okay, hold on. Uh just something that won't die any instantly. Okay, we'll do that. We'll make it 190. It's so dumb. 
Oh, hold on. It has to be alive. Hold on. Or it has to be moving. Okay, pause AI. Cool. It shoots out a little tether. Look at those electric procs. It does no damage. But there are 700 electricity procs on this. Um, I haven't figured out a way to abuse this. But my thinking on it was, is if I start adding electric damage to this, uh, there might be a way to force the electric procs to start accepting my faction damage onto it. Which would instantly cause this to go like through the roof and damage. But it's it's got the little cable. And if it wasn't for the fact that this was floating, let me show you on a unit that's on the ground. Where with the uh the vaporize thing with the machine gun, the death machine rifle. Uh the vaporize mechanic. Okay, let's show this guy. Here we go. Of course I'm using Korra. Okay. Hold on, let me get rid of that. Goodbye, Venari. Alright. There you go. And this guy's permanently CC'd. Oh, it's a Hellion. Okay. If it's a if it's not like a bombard or something, and it's like a rare unit, it will permanently trigger as often as possible the electric thing. So if it's a unit that can't be CC'd, as this guy's flying around, he's just CCing everything. As much as I want this to be like viable it's literally got a little tether i find this so silly but the there's a couple of units and i picked one um that don't get cc'd but they'll get triggered every once in a while but as this guy's jumping around he's electric proccing stuff right so it's it's pretty useful it's it's rng based obviously Everybody would prefer something um, a little more permanent. Let me find a weaker enemy. Okay, here. Oh, it's CC'd that one. cc this one, bro. Uh, okay. So this is what normally happens. It'll just sit here and continuously electrocute stuff. This is so silly. I love it. But it's a free electricity prox. It triggers somewhat often. It, it does have a cooldown, but it's low. But, um... Actually, let me check something else. Here's the big one. I should have checked this before. So let's see if this works. Yeah, it's an extra type of CC. They'll be staggered every now and then. And it'll slow them down slightly. Don't rely on it, though. But you can see him struggling. But the, the CC, it's like fractional. Yeah, you can see I'm pausing with the trigger. So if you're... Obviously there are better choices nowadays, but even with something where you need it to be CC'd... I died. Maybe as like a third type of CC when you're completing your rotation between like uh, Magnus Lockdown and maybe an Ensnare build or something. And at least at a minimum, it would give you... An electric proc, right? Like, so for condition overload. And it's separate from, like, a Veriglass. So you could prime... Uh, like, this one's set up for Viral Heat. I was doing, like, an actual damage build. But say you were to do Gas Cold on here, which is super popular. Um, 
just for extra procs, right? You could do gas, cold, and electricity with that one mod. So it would be an extra mod that, or an extra status proc that you could get passively. Um, and you could RNG more procs with this one. And it would be, it constantly shoots. And I'll show you that one real quick. So if you, if you really need, um, let me find something basic. The damage obviously isn't good, but you can see you got two procs and it just, it passively grants you procs, but firing this interrupts the other guy, which is permanent CC for most enemies. So you can see it procking. I don't know. I don't like it because obviously there's no damage, but two, um, if it stops, or if this is proccing, it interferes with the other precept. So, I don't know. Your mileage may vary on that modding for both. But I like the electric pulse. It's just so silly that your sentinel shoots out a little wire. Maybe I love it because it's goofy. But okay, next one. Uh, the most common one. Um, the Helios... Um, there's a couple of build. Okay, so these are the precepts. These are the ones you get with the Sentinel itself. Investigator, this is the beeping you hear all the time. Um, the, if you don't have the solar widget, if you're super new to the game, this is going to consume codex charges. Uh, so I would recommend getting the solar widget first from Samaras. Um... But this is going to passively scan everything. And the cool thing about this is, is that when you start scanning Kavats, make sure before you're going to Deimos and completing your scans, this is going to passively give you uh, Kavat genetic codes up until the first 10. So it's, it's, it's a couple of free genetic codes. It's not a lot. But it, it helps. Um, let's see. So we have that one. Best get target and receptor. This one used to be more relevant. Um, and it was relevant because the glaive was melee. And now the glad mod stack doesn't work. So um, this has fallen out of favor. Use assault mode. Equip like a Veriglass or something. Um, but the, the Samaras mod for this, which is kind of interesting. If you complete, if you know you're in an area where you have all of the scans, right? You would then swap this one-to-one -one with Investigator. And a lot of times if I'm doing a long run, um, I will just equip this with both of these. So I will just naturally and passively complete all the scans in like one shot. Like if I'm doing a one hour survival, there's enough enemies for me to get all the scans. You're just naturally going to get all the scans for that tile set. But then I will have this on there also, and I will even remove assault mode to just keep, help my Helio stay alive longer. And I will slot it where, wherever I have uh, assault mode at. So investigator, like I would slot, um, I forget what I would slot here. I'd slot like shield charger or something to get this off. But this gives you a passive damage boost. And if you hit an enemy on the circles that it makes, and I can't show this in the simulacrum, but if, you, if you've seen Banshee's sonar, the little uh, orbs she makes, or not the orbs, but the little light spots on enemies that she makes, it looks like a slightly smaller version of that. Um, so it's just a passive 2x damage boost. It's not the worst thing, especially if you're running like a heavy corrosive build. 
you're getting a hundred pennies on the dollar on that one hit and you'll generally you'll one shot something so it doubles your damage if you hit that weak spot this pays huge dividends if it's like a headshot if it covers their head and you get a headshot like it you see some pretty insane numbers because it's a flat passive 2x um but this allows you to keep scanning um they don't contribute to codex though and more importantly they don't contribute to uh kavat scans just the first 10 do from investigator so this is the standard thing it was used for the glaive mod um, but that doesn't stock stack the same way anymore so basically the utility with this is when you're doing a new area say like the zeraman you run through with the helios i've done it when a new area comes up just equip the helios run through the missions or do the standard quest line or whatever that comes out and by the time you finish the intro quest line for that area um, you should have most, if not all, of your scans done. So that's what this is. This is more of a completionist aspect nowadays. Uh, getting your Kavat scan, uh, not your Kavat scans, but getting your Codex scans up. Like, I have most of the Codex done. I need to go finish some stuff, but like, I'm at like 90%. But when I go and work on finishing these, I'm not scanning these. I'm going to where these enemies spawn. And I'm letting the Helios scan them. So I would just go to the mission um, where the enemy would spawn with a Helios and just let it passively scan. Where's that at? Warwick? I don't recognize that name. So that's how you would use the Helios. When a new area comes out, just passively let it scan. All right, next one. Uh, Nautilus, probably the highest utility. It is the most recent Sentinel. Where are we at? Okay, these are the two precepts. Uh, there is no Samaras mod for this, and it probably doesn't need one. Uh, the most useful one, in terms of regular star chart running, uh, by default, is it forces enemies to cluster. Uh, I'll show you what that mechanic is right now. Like that. Yanks them all together. Super good. For AoE weapons. Uh, it also provides a bit of CC. So, these guys got damage reduction. Whatever. Because when they're being dragged, they're not firing at you. Um... More importantly, that's the big one. Works on Eximus. I don't know why, even with Overs up. So, if you want to use this to take advantage of that, by all means, I get it. The other precept uh, is a Railjack only precept. Um, Nautilus has 100% share to repair nearby. Railjack hull damage and extinguish fires on Railjack. Cool down 20 seconds. If you're a more experienced player and you're doing Railjack stuff, I would highly, highly recommend you take a Nautilus. Because if your new bros um, are having trouble figuring out the mechanics, this will allow you to go from either like the pilot seat or the gunner seat and literally just run through the ship repairing stuff. Because all you have to do, sorry, with this one, is just get near it, and it's like an auto trigger. It just repairs it 100%, uh, 0% to 100 instantly. It's like a guaranteed success instead of doing that little wheel thing where you have to time it. So it just auto triggers. Um, this is super convenient. Um, and I can't think of a situation where I've needed this cooldown more than 20 seconds. Obviously, there probably is, but I just haven't run into it where I've been like, man, I wish this triggered faster. Um, so that's the big one. Works on Eximus. This is a Railjack only one. Um, but more importantly, the Nautilus uh, has the best Sentinel 
by miles. It's not even close. Uh, beam weapon, if you run crit, it's 24%. That's not stellar. But the difference is the status chance. With most of the other weapons, you have to pick completely between status or crit. And this is, I think it's a Galaxian. Is what the stats were copied from. I think it's a Galaxian. Maybe I can check. Fourteen thirty eight. Yeah, it's this. It's a Galaxian, but a Sentinel weapon. So it's a rifle, a a full rifle, but attached to a Sentinel. This does hella damage. So like most of the lower level star chart stuff, this kills shit. Like, straight up one trigger on the beam weapon. It's it's insane. If you don't have one of these, um, even if you don't want to use the Nautilus, say you want to use the Helios, this weapon on the Nautilus is almost worth farming up and just not using the Nautilus. Just so you have the Veriglass, because it's literally a primary we weapon, but on the Sentinel. Um, and it's damn good for... Uh, I run gas electric a lot. I was messing around with a damage build. Uh, so you would just build for fire rate, standard uh, beam weapon stuff. But this weapon is hyper-flexible. It's literally a primary. So I, I think that's enough of a hype job on the Nautilus. The, the weapon's the big deal. Um, and Cordon works on Eximus. Uh, Taxon, this is the new bro. Got a couple Forma in this. Uh, the Artax is crap, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's garbage. Not even going to talk about that. It, it's it's an MR0 Sentinels, but it's pretty nice. Um, let's see, Precepts. I think there's only one that needs to be talked about. Yeah, this one. Blast enemies within 10 meters, converting 200 damage into shields for Warframe. It's a passive shield gate. You can stack this with the shield mods. Um, like meta ray and stuff like that. And even this for melee. Oh, that one too. There we go. So stack with these. Um, oh, and I'm going to talk about this forever because it was literally one of the few things... I was surprised to learn. I had naturally, when I modded, put them in the correct order. But I didn't realize that there was an order to these. And I'll post a link to the guy. I keep mentioning it because I was blown away that there was an actual priority order to this. Um, but yeah, whichever one you want to pri prioritize, you're going to put top left. And then priority goes across left to right, and then it goes down left to right. What this means is, is say you have assault mode, right? The sentinel will prioritize attacking stuff. So even if you run out of shields, it won't stop attacking. But if I take shield charger and move it to the left, and say it's attacking, and I don't need shields, and then I get hit, and then now I need shields, it will stop attacking to give me shields now. So assault mode, you want to always drop in the bottom right so everything else triggers before the Sentinel even attempts to do damage. Like, if everything else is going right, fine, you can attack stuff. But I want everything else done, so make sure to always drop assault mode down in the bottom right. But uh, molecular conversion... And I'll post a link again to that guy's video because it was super interesting. I was genuinely surprised that somebody uh, had figured that out. I mean, somebody obviously had to, but it was just, I didn't know. I was surprised. Uh, molecular conversion is essentially a free shield gate. Um, you could try to min-max this with like a synth set. I messed around, threw a bunch of form in it. Messed around, found out. Um, but this thing is just, the stats are so low, the weapon sucks. Um, 
The shield gate is nice. If you run a bunch of shield stuff, it'll easily get you through starting level star chart. So, anyway, I think that's enough on that. Molecular conversion, pretty dope. Okay, hold on. There we go. The worm. Uh, this guy has sort of become relegated to a flex item, to be honest. But this is what he looks like. Uh, let's talk about precepts. Okay. I think that's the only one. Oh, crowd dispersion. Yeah. So you have crowd dispersion, which, to be honest, is kind of nice. Unleashes a 10 meter radial knockdown when multiple enemies are nearby. And it triggers pretty often. It, it actually triggers pretty often. Uh, but the big deal now is the Cephalon Samaris mod. Uh, negate. This is something, it's like a passive that charges up. Um, I don't think there's an icon. Let's see, it should trigger in a second. If there is one. Yeah. So no icon, but let's see... The little AoE. There. Um, let's do it with Iaximus enemies. Uh, I think they need to be trying to kill me. Pause AI. There's the knockback. Your mileage may vary on this because if you see the knockback, you're trying to kill that guy, right? So this is more for like melee units to pop them off you. And it's really difficult to show... Hold on. I could probably... Let's knock these guys down to... Level 1, so I can just passively face tank. Alright, we'll do that. So that's the knockback. Alright, it's not going to show it. Stupid knockback. I need to be hit with a status. Oh no, you just procced. But anyway, this has a pretty cool interaction with adaptation. Because um, adaptation, when you're running frames where you need a min rank... Min rank Ugh. Hard. A minimum ranked adaptation. Adaptation triggers off of status effects. And the precept prevents status effects. So this actually allows you to save a lot more when you're doing that minimum... Um, when you're trying to use an unranked adaptation to save on status effects. This actually helps out with that. Now, it's not one-to-one. -one, um, but it does allow you to charge up a status effect. 
prevention. So it acts like a barrier if you run around a corner. Um, I just need something that has more status effects. All right, hold on. Status effect me, bro. Okay. I actually couldn't find a way to guarantee show this, but it, it prevents a status effect. Um, and it's every five seconds, and you can prime it. So, like, say you're traveling between enemies and it takes longer than five seconds. Say you're doing, like, a coup of survival farm. As you're traveling, if nothing hits you for five seconds, you know that the next status effect that you have... Um, will be prevented and that might be the difference in your adaptation timer resetting so you can then start preventing more status effects you know what i mean so it's it's got some niche uses if you're having trouble with status effects killing you this plus like an unranked adaptation can uh really help out all right let's do the final one uh this is probably the most useful sentinel um, but it does require uh, the preset mods. When you think of the Oxalis, think of the Oxalis as uh, your standings sentinel. Uh, you would equip this if you're farming. Uh, if you're fishing, you would equip this if you're helping uh, like new bros. If you're if you're higher level and you have like a clan like I do and you're running missions with lower level people or people who are just new to the game, listen, they gotta get through it. You would equip this guy and run this mod from Cephal on Samaras. Uh, the botanist Oxalis Sentinel will scan plants over 50 meters or within 50 meters over two seconds. This consumes codec scanner charges. If you can afford this mod from Samaras, I'm assuming you have the solar widget. Okay, this guy costs 75,000 standing. The solar widget costs 25, or whatever it is. But this is way more expensive than the solar widget, which you definitely should have. But this scans passively uh, plants, straight and simple. Uh, scan matter, resource containers within 60 meter are revealed on the minimap. Your mileage may vary. The most interesting thing about this is, um, is you can see them. It gives you like a pulse, um, where they like glow green. Uh, the other super useful one and why this is so good for standings is this reveals hot spots, and I can actually show you this reveals hot. Yeah, there we go. Reveals hot spots for fishing within 100 meters and applies luminous dye to fish within 40. So this will auto apply dye for you. And I think that's pretty neat. So you just go up to the hot spot, it dyes everything for you, you just fish. So nice and easy. Uh, but let me actually show you how effective this is because it really is potent. Because obviously I can't load in plants. Alright, navigation. Alright, solo. We're going to go to Earth Prime. I'm going to jump in the mission just show you and so you can see it scan. There is a large platoon at Green Marine Station here. Leave no one standing. And listen for it. You'll, you'll know instantly when I get in the right area.
Okay, you hear the clicking? That's pretty nice, right? For scans. I mean, how often are you doing scans? But you know what I mean? Like, if you're helping somebody out to a low-level mission, this is you getting scans now. Like, why would I run around and scan with the scanner when I could do this? Right, I've got 12 Moonlights and 12, or two, 12 Moonlight Dragon Lilies, 12 Moonlight Thrush Crowns. And it's just from slowly walking through the mission. So, when you get to an area where there's things to scan, just hang out for a second, let it scan. Enemy is broken. Well done. Now get to extraction. You can see it highlighting stuff. It needs visual. So try to find like a high spot, right? And you'll see them glow when it's scanning. So when you see stuff being scanned, just sort of hang out in the area for a little bit. Let the new bro get the full experience. And when you're running missions with a newer player, don't uh, go through with like a Brahma and blow everything up, right? But with that, nice quick Earth Prime mission, 18 Dragon Lilies, 22 Thresh Cones, Moonlights, nice and easy. And I didn't even have to personally scan anything. Um, and let me show you the fishing. Now this is, it's super useful. So I got the fishing equipped, actually let me check before I go in. All right, scan aquatic life forms. All right, if you look at my mini map, because I'm within 100 meters of it. Man, they nerfed the hell out of these spawns. Um, but obviously, normally you would have to look for the bubbles, but look. I obviously didn't throw anything. And all the fish are pigmented. So this would be, this would be your fishing buddy. Just that way you can passively find if a hot spot's active, you can check pretty easily this way. Um, 
But yeah, think of the, the Oxalis as your standing sentinel. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is like finishing touch on the sentinels. Um, but yeah, I think I covered everything. The carrier, the death cube, the Durga, the, the Jin, Helios, the Nihilus, Oxalis. Oh, I actually missed one. Hold on. I mean, the shade's pretty self-explanatory. It makes you uh, invisible, but I'll show you like ways to help with it. Uh, the shade can be really, really powerful in certain circumstances, but the, there's only really one reason why anybody uses it. All right, there's the regular shade. Uh, looks like this, but this is the Prisma variant, right? Um, the point of the shade is to make you invisible. And because there's a Kubro that does the same thing, it's not that good because the Kubro is better range. Um, but the cool thing about it, I will pause some enemies. Man, I default to these guys a lot. Right within 10 meters. Pop, I'm gone. But here's the big thing. Hold on, that one actually killed them. Damn it. All right, please don't die. Right, so abilities, get rid of it. There is a bonus damage mod. And there's a reason why this is the worst one. Uh. This gives you a chance to collect yourself. But there's a problem with it, right? So if I cast an ability... It doesn't trigger. But if I kill all the enemies nearby, there's nothing within 10 meters of me. But the ability cast itself doesn't get you out of it. Firing your weapon does. But say I stay near this guy and I look this way. He moved away, of course. Hold on. If I stay within 10 meters of the guy and say I'm using like a Korra... I can then whip away because it didn't affect that guy and I can drag guys in while having a guy here like maybe he's CC or maybe he's like oblivious or something I can then pull guys in or CC them provided I stay close to somebody it's a very odd play style but that's the gimmick um, and it does have a Samaras mod uh, for bonus damage. Where's that? Here we go. When Ghost Invisibility is broken, the Shade's owner is granted plus 100% weapon damage for three seconds. I'm pretty sure it's multiplicative, but it's only 120%. Maybe. I just can't see a use for it because the rage to trigger it is 10 meters like otherwise you would basically be killing everything if something's within 10 meters of you you should probably be shooting it i mean what what else like what you're gonna run hijack missions right it it doesn't help you there um and it takes too long to abuse three seconds where when you have stuff like Vigorous Swap, where it's literally swap weapons, right? I don't know. I just can't see much use for this this mod. Uh, it 
I mean, if you're probably min-maxing and trying to, like, damage cap on something, maybe, because you could Vigorous Swap and then cast this. Um, and that would give you a 4x multiplier plus a stealth bonus. But I, I just can't see this being the name of the game. So I, your mileage may vary. I know some people that use this. Uh, they run rifles on them that are silenced. Uh, so it's just that bas you basically just stay invisible for as long as possible. But there's a there's a Kubro that does a lot better for like stealth. But anyway, that's the last one. Complete review of each Sentinel, how to use it, a little bit of how to abuse it, something comprehensive, just to cover the entire category. Uh, but I'm going to end the video. It's been an hour. Thank you guys, and have a blessed day.